What if I told you the quest to live forever isn't a modern obsession? It's as old as civilization itself. Over 4,000 years ago, King Gilgamesh, ruler of Uruk, embarked on a journey to find the secret of eternal life. A tale immortalized in one of humanity's oldest stories, the Epic of Gilgamesh, he failed. His quest, like so many others since, ended in the realization that death is the one certainty we all share. Yet the dream of immortality endured. Fast forward to the age of exploration and legends of the Fountain of Youth captivated European adventurers. Ponce de Leon, a Spanish conquistador, is said to have searched for this mythical spring, believing it could grant eternal youth. He found Florida instead. These stories reveal a profound truth. The desire to conquer aging and defy mortality has always been woven into the fabric of human ambition. But what was once the stuff of myth is now edging closer to scientific reality. Today, scientists and researchers aren't searching for mystical springs or divine relics. So it's, they're armed with cutting, edge tools like CRISPR, advanced artificial intelligence and pharmacological innovations. The modern pursuit of immortality has shifted from the supernatural to the scientific. The big question is no longer if we can extend human life, but how far we can push the boundaries of what's possible. Could we truly live to 1,000? Or is the idea as unreachable as Gilgamesh's dream? This isn't just an academic exercise or a story confined to laboratories. It's a challenge to the human condition, an audacious attempt to rewrite the rules of life itself. But before we dive into the science, let's take a closer look at the breakthroughs that are making such bold aspirations feel tantalizingly within reach. What if aging wasn't inevitable? What if it could be treated, even reversed? That's not a science fiction fantasy. It's a hypothesis being tested in labs right now. Scientists studying the mechanisms of aging increasingly see it as a biological process that can be slowed, stopped, or even turned back. The key lies in understanding the cellular and genetic drivers of aging. Take CRISPR, for example, the revolutionary gene editing tool that allows scientists to rewrite DNA with incredible precision. Imagine being able to correct mutations that lead to age-related diseases or enhance genes that promote cellular repair. Already, researchers have used this technology to extend the lives of mice, and trials are underway to see how these advancements might translate to humans. One breakthrough study even transferred a longevity gene from naked mole rats, animals that rarely age, into mice, improving their health and lifespan. Could we one day use similar techniques to extend our own lives? It's no longer a rhetorical question, but genetics is only one piece of the puzzle. Another frontier is pharmacology with compounds like rapamycin and senolytic showing extraordinary promise. Rapamycin, originally discovered in soil from Easter Island, has been shown to extend lifespan in multiple animal studies by targeting a pathway involved in cell growth and aging. Meanwhile, senolytics are designed to clear out zombie cells, those damaged, non-functioning cells that accumulate as we age, causing inflammation and disease. Trials in humans suggest these therapies could dramatically improve health span, the number of years we live in good health. And then there's artificial intelligence, which is revolutionizing the field. AI algorithms are being used to analyze vast amounts of biological data, identifying new drug targets and optimizing treatments for aging-related diseases. Imagine an AI-powered aging clock that could determine your biological age, predict your health risks, and recommend personalized interventions to keep you younger for longer. This isn't some distant dream. It's happening right now in companies like Deep Longevity and in Silico Medicine. The science is advancing faster than many could have predicted. I'm, but there's a catch we -y. While the tools and techniques are extraordinary, they also raise profound questions. If we can slow aging or even halt it, what does that mean for us as individuals do you, and for humanity as a whole? As we step closer to the possibility of radical life extension, we're forced to confront not just the technical challenges, but the ethical and societal dilemmas that come with it. And that's where the real conflict begins.
Imagine a world where living for centuries becomes a privilege, not a right. The science of life extension isn't just about biology or technology, it's also a test of our humanity. Who gets access to these breakthroughs? How do we allocate resources in a world where lifespans stretch far beyond what we've ever known? These questions are not hypothetical. They're the moral crossroads we stand at today. Let's start with one of the most pressing concerns, overpopulation. If people begin living to 150, 200, or even 1,000 years, the consequences for our planet would be staggering. Earth's resources are already under strain with a global population exceeding 8 billion. How would ecosystems cope if mortality rates plummet while birth rates remain steady? Would we need strict controls on reproduction echoing the policies of dystopian fiction? Or could technological advancements in renewable energy, food production and waste management keep pace with the demands of a longer living humanity? These are questions we must answer before we unlock the door to radical longevity. And then there's the issue of inequality. Historically, medical breakthroughs have tended to benefit the wealthy first, and life extension technologies are no exception. Today, cutting-edge treatments like gene therapy or stem cell rejuvenation come with astronomical price tags accessible only to the elite. Could life extension create a new aristocracy, not of birth but of biology? Imagine a future where the rich live for centuries while the rest of society struggles to access basic health care. The gap between the haves and have-nots could become not just financial but existential. But the ethical dilemmas don't stop there. What about the psychological toll of living for centuries? At first, the idea of extra decades might sound appealing. More time to achieve, explore and grow. But would the novelty wear off after 200 years? Would our sense of purpose erode if life stretched endlessly before us? Some philosophers argue that our awareness of mortality gives life its urgency and meaning. Without it, would we lose our drive to create, innovate and connect? Even culture itself could transform. Traditions often evolve as one generation passes and another takes its place. If lifespans extend dramatically, would cultural progress grind to a halt as the same individuals dominate positions of power and influence for centuries? Or would longevity create opportunities for deeper wisdom and innovation as people have more time to develop and master their skills? And finally, there's the question of fairness. Should we even pursue radical life extension when so many people in the world still lack access to clean water, education or basic medical care? Would it be ethical to prioritise extending life when billions don't yet have the means to live fully? These are not simple questions, and they don't have simple answers. What's clear is that the science of life extension doesn't exist in a vacuum. It's intertwined with social, economic and ethical challenges that could reshape the very fabric of human civilization. As we stand on the brink of this new frontier, we have to ask, um, what kind of world are we creating and who will benefit from it? It is. For all its promise, the idea of living for 1,000 years is met with skepticism and not without reason. Critics argue that human lifespan has natural biological limits, that ageing is an inevitable process encoded in our very DNA. But is that true? Or is it a myth born of what we've historically believed rather than what science is now uncovering? One of the most common arguments is that ageing is simply unavoidable. Humans weren't meant to live forever, sceptics say. But here's the thing, ageing isn't a law of nature. It's a biological process, a series of cellular and molecular changes that theoretically can be slowed or even stopped. Some species, like certain types of jellyfish, have already cracked the code for biological immortality. If it's possible in nature, why not for us? Another myth is that extending life would inevitably mean prolonging frailty and suffering. But scientists working on life extension aren't just trying to add years, they're trying to add healthy years. The goal is not to extend old age, but to extend youth, allowing people to remain active, vibrant and disease-free for much longer. In fact, trials with senolytics and other therapies have shown promising results in reducing age-related diseases in animal models. So, while immortality may still be out of reach, healthier, longer lives are not. 
Then there's the belief that life extension is unnatural, that we're playing God. But consider this, haven't humans always sought to overcome natural limitations to vaccines, antibiotics, organ transplants, all of these were once seen as unnatural. Today, they're considered miracles of modern medicine. Extending life isn't a rejection of nature. It's a continuation of humanity's age-old quest to improve and transcend it. Of course, there are genuine challenges. Translating animal studies to humans is no small feat, and many promising therapies are still in early stages. But the history of medicine is filled with breakthroughs that seemed impossible until they weren't. The skepticism is healthy. It pushes researchers to rigorously test their ideas. But it's also worth remembering that every great leap forward began as an audacious idea. The question isn't whether we should challenge the limits of human lifespan. We already are. The real question is how far can we go? And what are we willing to risk to get there? It's ironic, isn't it? Just a few centuries ago, living past 40 was a rarity. In the Middle Ages, the average life expectancy hovered around 30. Five years, not because humans were biologically weaker, but because disease, famine and lack of medical knowledge cut lives tragically short. Fast forward to today and we take it for granted that many of us will live into our 80s or beyond. Yet now that we've conquered so many of the threats that once limited our years, we've set our sights on something even more audacious erasing aging itself. Consider the transformations in public health. The advent of vaccines in the 18th century, the discovery of antibiotics in the 20th, and the development of modern sanitation have all dramatically extended human lifespan. At the turn of the 20th century, global life expectancy was just 30, one years. Today, it's more than double that. What once seemed unimaginable, a world where the average person lives into old age, is now our reality. But here's the contrast. While past generations fought to survive the basics, infectious diseases, poor hygiene, and malnutrition, our fight is now against time itself. Aging, once seen as a natural and unavoidable process, is being reframed as a challenge to overcome, much like polio or smallpox was in its time. This shift in perspective is radical. It suggests that what we consider normal aging might one day be viewed as a curable condition, a relic of a less advanced era. Yet history teaches us to be cautious. For every breakthrough there have been failures and unintended consequences. When early explorers sought the fountain of youth, their journeys ended in disappointment. When scientists in the 20th century first experimented with hormone replacement to reverse aging, the results were often disastrous, leading to cancer and other health issues. The pursuit of immortality has always been fraught with pitfalls, and today's efforts are no exception. What's different now is that we have tools our ancestors couldn't have dreamed of. From genetic engineering to artificial intelligence, the gap between aspiration and achievement is narrowing. The question is no longer whether we can extend life, but how far we'll go and at what cost. As we push these boundaries, we're reminded of an essential truth. Every leap forward in science comes with trade, offs. The challenge is learning from the past to navigate the future wisely. If the present feels like the cusp of a scientific revolution, the future promises even greater possibilities. The road ahead for longevity research is paved with bold ideas, groundbreaking experiments, and an ever-growing sense of urgency. Every year, new discoveries bring us closer to understanding the fundamental mechanisms of aging and how to stop them. Take the field of cellular rejuvenation. Scientists are developing ways to reverse cellular aging by reprogramming mature cells back into their youthful states. This breakthrough, pioneered by Nobel laureate Shinya Yamanaka, has already shown remarkable potential in lab experiments. Researchers are now exploring how these Yamanaka factors could be applied to living organisms, potentially allowing entire tissues or even organs to be rejuvenated. Imagine a future where age-related damage to the heart, brain or liver could be reversed not just treated. But cellular rejuvenation is just one piece of the puzzle. 
Advances in artificial intelligence are accelerating progress in drug discovery and personalized medicine. AI systems can analyze vast amounts of biological data to identify new compounds that target aging pathways or predict which treatments will work best for individual patients. These tools are not only speeding up research, but also reducing the costs, making cutting edge therapies more accessible. One of the most exciting frontiers is the development of synolytics, drugs that target and eliminate senescent cells. These zombie cells accumulate as we age, releasing inflammatory signals that contribute to chronic diseases like arthritis, Alzheimer's and diabetes. Early trials in humans suggest that senolytics could significantly improve health span, the years we live in good health, even if they don't yet promise immortality. But for all the promise, the road ahead is not without obstacles. Translating these breakthroughs from the lab to the clinic is a long, expensive process of science. Regulatory approval, large-scale clinical trials and public acceptance all take time. And then there's the question of who will pay for these innovations. Will they be accessible to everyone or reserved for the wealthy few? The stakes are enormous. Every year, 100,000 people die of age-related causes. If even a fraction of the therapies in development prove effective, they could save millions of lives and transform the way we think about aging and death. The possibilities are inspiring and daunting. But one thing is certain. The pursuit of longevity is no longer a question of if. It's a question of when and how far. So, let's return to the question that started this journey. Could we really live to 1,000? The science suggests it's possible, eventually, but the real question isn't about feasibility. It's about consequences. If we conquer aging, what kind of world will we create? Will we unlock a golden age of human potential or open the door to unforeseen challenges? As we edge closer to these possibilities, we're reminded of a quote by Albert Einstein. The significant problems we face cannot be solved at the same level of thinking we were at when we created them. Extending life isn't just a scientific challenge. It's a philosophical one. It forces us to rethink what it means to live, to die, and to be human. Living to 1,000 might not be around the corner, but the journey to get there is already reshaping our world. The breakthroughs, the debates, and the dilemmas are as much a part of this story as the destination itself. The question now is, what role will you play in this unfolding future? Would you embrace an extended lifespan, or does the idea leave you with more questions than answers? The future of life is here, and it's asking us to decide what kind of future we want.